If you ask Amanda to find honor, he'll probably tell you something like, it's doing the right thing when no one else is looking. In other words, they define honor as integrity. Now that definition of honor is correct in the modern use of the word, but honor meant something very different in ancient and classical times and all the way up till about the early 20th century. Because classical honor played a huge role in manhood for thousands of years, I think it's very important for men to understand what it is. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now the first thing to understand is that honor comes in two types, horizontal and vertical. Horizontal honor is the mutual respect men give each other within an exclusive group of equals. It isn't respect simply for existing as a human being, but something that has to be earned. For horizontal honor to exist and really mean something, three elements must be in place. The first element is a code of honor. A code of honor lays out the standards that must be reached in order for a man to receive respect within a group. These rules outline what it takes to obtain honor or respect and how it may be lost. And that last stipulation is paramount. Honor that cannot be lost is not honor. Codes of honor often lay out very high standards for the group, but despite their difficulty, codes of honor are always viewed as minimum standards for inclusion. If you can't meet them, then you're not part of the honor group. The second element is an honor group. An honor group consists of individuals who understand and have committed to live the code of honor. Because honor depends on respect, an honor group must be a society of equals. Honor is based on the judgments of other members in the group. Therefore, the opinion of those members must matter to you, and they won't if you don't see them as your equals. While you might respect someone above you in the social pecking order, it's hard to respect someone you think is beneath you. Honor groups must also be exclusive. If everyone and anyone can be a part of the group, regardless of whether they live by the code or not, then honor becomes meaningless. Egalitarianism and honor cannot coexist. Finally, the honor group must be tight-knit and intimate. A society governed by mutual respect or honor requires everyone in the group to know each other and interact face to face. Honor cannot exist in a society where anonymity dominates. The third element is shame. A person who fails to live up to the group's code loses his honor or his right to the respect of other honor group members as equals. A healthy feeling of shame or the recognition that a person has failed to live up to the honor group's code is necessary for honor to exist. When individuals stop caring whether they've lost the right to respect in the group, Honor loses its power to compel and check individuals' behavior. Horizontal honor is an all or nothing game. You either have the respect of your, of your peers or you don't. Bringing dishonor upon yourself by failing to meet the minimum standards of the group or showing disdain or indifference to those standards means exclusion from the group as well as shame. Thus, in a tribe, a team, a group, whatever, horizontal honor serves as a dividing line between us and them, between the honorable and the deficient. Think of horizontal honor like being a member of a football team where no one is cut as long as they show up and do the work. To stay on the team, you have to make a full effort every practice and you have to follow the team rules. If you do, you get to wear the jersey and have the respect or the honor of your fellow teammates. They'll have your back. But if you skip practice and jack around and show disregard for contributing to the skill, reputation, and the spirit decor of the team, you're going to lose your teammates' respect. And if the coach doesn't make you quit, your peers will. The second type of honor is vertical honor. Vertical honor isn't about mutual respect, but is rather about giving praise and esteem to those individuals who are superior in various ways to the other men in the group. Vertical honor by its nature is hierarchical and competitive. Vertical honor goes to the man who not only lives the code of honor, but excels at doing so. Attaining vertical honor gains a man praise along with greater power and privileges. So vertical honor is praise, esteem, and admiration. Now for vertical honor to exist, horizontal honor must first be present. Without a baseline of mutual respect among equal peers, or horizontal honor, winning praise and esteem or vertical honor means very little. Now going back to that football team analogy, to even have a chance at earning vertical honor, you first need to be a, you first need to be a member of the team or have horizontal honor. Then you need to distinguish yourself by outperforming your peers either by putting in way more effort, showing superior skill on the field, or demonstrating leadership skills that go above and beyond the minimum required to belong on the team. So manly honor, as our forebears understood it, consisted of two parts, respect from the honor group, it's horizontal honor, and praise from the honor group. It's vertical honor. Now implicit in this twofold notion of honor is that it depends on the opinion of others. You can have a sense of your own honor, but that isn't enough. Others must recognize your honor for it to exist. Being the sole judge of your worth, skill, and manhood leads to narcissism and mediocrity. You know, a trophy means nothing if you make it yourself and then give it to yourself. And you can't declare yourself to be an Olympic champion. No one would recognize that. Other people have to recognize that. And we like to flatter ourselves and feel like we're better men than we are. And that's why we need men to compete against and to keep us accountable. Men will call us out when we're blowing smoke. Thus, honor isn't just an interstate. 
but it's your reputation as judged by one's peers. Now keep in mind, this isn't the judgment of just anyone. It's those who are your equals, those who are living the same honor code, men you respect and who mutually respect each other. You should care what they think. So what is honor? Honor is a reputation worthy of respect and admiration. Now, the reason men have lived and died by honor for thousands of years is that it's highly effective in getting everybody in a group to give their best. You don't want to let your brothers down by failing to live up to the code, and you don't want to be ostracized by them if you do. Particularly in life or death situations like combat, it's essential that each man pulls his weight. Making sure every man pulls his weight on your team not only makes the team stronger as a whole, but adds to your team's reputation in comparison to other groups, which not only acts as a source of strength and pride for the group, but it also intimidates your foes and deters them from wanting to mess with you. Your classical honor doesn't exist much anymore in the modern West because well, we're a large, anonymous society, and honor is predicated on one's membership in a tight-knit group where you interact face-to-face -face and your peers can judge your reputation. Fire and police departments, sports teams, fraternal organizations, and some church groups remain some of the last bastions of classical honor for men. Now, if you'd like to revive honor in the modern world, one of the first things you do is form your own honor group. And for more information on how to do that, click the link below. Now that you know what honor means, the next logical question is what a man's honor coach consists of. And I'll cover that question in another video. Until next time, this is Brett McKay telling you to stay manly.